So I'm going to show you 10 methods for climbing a tree. But before you try any of these methods, climbing trees is dangerous, so be sure to check out my other video I made on how to climb trees safely. Now the methods I'm going to show you today are mainly meant for getting into the tree, because once you get to the main branches of the tree, climbing a tree is pretty straightforward. But here are some techniques and methods for when those branches are just out of reach, or there's different challenges and setups you can use to climb different types of trees. So our first tree climbing technique is going to be the tree run, also known as the wall run in parkour. If you know how to wall run, on a normal wall in the city, this is going to be easy for you. The only difference between doing a wall run and a tree run is that you need to be aware of the bark and the grip because some bark on some trees will peel away from you when you try to run up them. And trees tend to be more narrow, so you wanna make sure that you're precise with your foot placement because if you hit too far to one side, it can slip forward and then you're falling into the tree. The other thing to be careful with when doing the tree run is to really scout out your landing area because if you don't make it up and grab that branch you want to be able to drop somewhere where it's clear. Around trees there's often big roots or rocks and you don't want to roll your ankle so make sure you got a clear run up and a clear landing spot if you don't make it up or if you have to bail. Now if you want an in-depth tutorial on the wall run technique itself you can check out my other tutorials I have on YouTube on how to do that move but just to give you a quick break down on how to do a good wall run but on a tree so the tree run you want a good amount of momentum going into the tree and you're going to be planting your foot high enough up so that you can push into the tree as you plant into the tree I'm jumping from the ground as well as jumping off the tree and then once I get that kick off the tree it's just spotting the branch I'm aiming for and trying to grab it an easy way to practice this is to start slow just walking into it and trying to get just a step off the tree so you can feel the grip and also how it feels to take off and then from there slowly start increasing your momentum to try and push harder off the tree and get higher and higher. All right this next method is inspired by rock climbing and bouldering. It's called the dyno. So this is actually using a rock climbing technique called the dyno which is when you're on one handhold and you have to use your feet and hands to leap to be able to reach the next handhold. This is useful on trees when the distance between two branches is too big for you to reach normally. You can use the dyno to help generate more momentum to grab the higher branch. Once again, I'd recommend only doing this on the bottom branches of a tree so that if you don't make it, you don't have a long ways to fall. When doing the dyno, it's all about using your legs and your arms together as one motion. You wanna make sure you have a good secure grip with your hands and that you have a good placement for your feet. Sometimes you can't always plant your feet to be able to push straight down, but you can still leverage them against the tree so you do get some push. And it can vary depending on how much you're getting leg push and how much you're just using your arms. So our next three methods are for when you can reach the branch, you can grab onto it, but maybe it's super thick, super wide, so it's hard to get a good grip onto or hard to pull yourself up onto it. So the first method we're going to do for getting up onto a thick branch is what I call the leg hook. So I can jump and grab the branch like this, but I'm just gonna get no leverage on it because I'm just barely hanging on there. And it's also more dangerous that way because you're more likely to peel off. When you have hands on both sides, you can apply that constriction, like a boa constrictor. You're wrapping around it so you get better leverage. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab, get in this position. I'm going to pick my hips up to hook one of my feet one of my heels onto it, try and get my leg as far over onto the branch as possible, ideally hooked under my knee. And once I have my leg hooked, I can use that leverage to actually help pull myself up and try and get my arms to hang over the branch. Now the next part is tricky. It's hard to get your chest and body up onto the branch from this position. So what I like to do with my leg that's dangling is I actually kick it up and forward and then kick it down to generate momentum, kind of like a kip, so that as my leg is swinging backwards, I kind of kick it forward again to use that momentum to push myself onto my chest and allow myself to get up onto the branch from there. The main thing to prepare for when doing this, it's gonna feel pretty strenuous to do it and you're gonna scrape up your arms a lot. And so I like to wear long sleeves if I'm training these. Otherwise, if I'm just out and about doing it and I just am doing it once, it's not a big deal if I scrape up my arms, but just something to keep in mind. Now our next method of climbing is the palm tree climb. This is a style of climbing that people use to climb palm trees, but it also works to climb trees that are more narrow 
and don't have any branches. When you first go to try this climbing method on a tree, you want to find the angle of the tree. You want to position yourself so that if you're holding onto the tree, you're not going to come into the tree, but actually hang away. Now there's two techniques I'm going to show you. This first technique is going to involve pinching the tree with my feet together like this, and then using my arms to kind of hold my body up into the tree. If you notice, if I go to this side of the tree and lose balance, I'm gonna naturally swing over to this side and find my resting point. So that's one way to tell which way the tree is angling. But once you're on the side where you're balanced and free hanging, from here I'm gonna place my hands up and simply jump my feet up. So the next technique is going to be actually wedging your feet straight onto the tree and then climbing up foot over foot, hand over hand. Normally when climbing a tree like this, I actually do a mix of the method where my feet are together and my feet are like this. When my feet are this way, there's going to be more leverage and strain on my arms, but it is easier to move smoother and faster up the tree. And I like the look of that style of climb a little bit better, but I do feel more secure and safer in this position. Now in doing this technique, you do wanna make sure you keep balance because it's going to be a little bit trickier to balance. And so what I do is I plant one foot and one arm so I can find that balance point, make sure I'm center on the tree, put my other arm up and then push my feet against the tree. So I'm pulling my feet into the tree so they don't slip. And then from here, I'm just gonna go hand over hand and foot over foot. In general, when I start out climbing that way, I will end up find a position where I can end up here so that I can rest my grip strength. And here you can just kind of rest a little bit. I'm still straining with my arm a bit, but it allows me to take a break and keep going if I need to, or conserve the energy to come back down. Now when coming down from this style of climb, again, you can use either method to go down. You can either come down with your feet together like this and just slowly let your feet slide down. Or you can come here and work your way down like this. If you're doing it barefoot, this method is going to be a little bit more intense on your feet, rubbing them raw, whereas this method is going to be a little bit more strenuous and require a little bit more balance as you come down. Because if your foot slips doing this method, it's a lot harder to save yourself. Oh yeah. Dad, can I talk on my camera? Yep. Up. Oh. Our next method is a pullover. This is a move from gymnastics when you're on a bar and you actually have a little bit of swinging momentum to kick your legs up and over the bar and then land at your waist. In this case, it's going to be a little bit different because it's on a big branch, but I would recommend that you know how to pull over on a bar first before you try and learn it on a thick branch because it's a little bit safer that way. Now when doing it on this thick branch, again, just like the leg hook, I'm going to grab it like this, which is different than the normal pullover. It's so more dangerous on this big branch to hold it here as you're flipping backwards because you have that chance of your hands peeling off. Whereas if I'm here, I have leverage on both sides so that I can hold onto the branch much more securely. On this one, I'm gonna have my hands a little bit further apart to help keep my body centered. Grab a tree like this, your body's gonna to wanna to naturally turn with it, but you wanna try and, for this pullover, try and keep your body facing the direction you would swing. Now I normally like to do this move with a little run and jump into it to get a little bit of that momentum right off the back to help jump and boost my legs up into the air. But you can also just do it from swinging. You don't need a lot of swing, just a little bit so that you can kick your hips and legs up and use that momentum to then kick them back behind you over the branch to try and get the weight of your legs on the other side so that you can land on top of it. This next method I call wedge climbing. This is when you wedge your body between two trees. Now there's a variety of ways to do this depending on how far apart the trees are and the size of the trees themselves. These two trees are big enough and close enough that I would just do a split wedge, which is where I just go between both of them, one foot on each one and use my hands to work my way up and down. When doing a split wedge, you wanna find the balance point between the two trees and the balance of your body because unlike a wall in parkour where you have a lot of surface area with trees, you have a small surface area and it's rounded. So you need to make sure you find that balance point between the two trees. And then once you get find that balance point where you can just sit on your legs like this, you can then use your hands to lift yourself up. When doing this one, because it is easy to go really high, 
make sure you have a clear landing area in case your foot slips or you have somewhere to jump out if you need to. When the trees are farther apart like these two, you can actually reach across with your hands on one tree and your feet on the other tree, but this is going to require a lot more strength. And then finally you have when they're very close together but one is small enough that you can wrap your hands around it and then use your feet against the larger one to wedge your body against it on the outside of the tree. This method will feel similar to the palm tree style climbing but it's actually easier because you get better leverage with your feet against that back tree so it's not putting so much pressure on your hand. This is the muscle up or the kip muscle up onto a branch. Now I'd recommend once again just like the pullover that you know how to muscle up or kip muscle up onto a normal bar but I would recommend knowing and learning the kipping momentum because this is really going to help you out with this big fat branch if you can know how to use your legs to kick yourself up. We are going to still grab it like you would the normal muscle up, but from here, it's going to be really hard to get the leverage to muscle up like you normally would because of how thick the branch is. So what we're going to do is do it in steps. Our first goal is to get our arms over the branch. Now once my arms are over the branch, I'm going to try and hold that position, get my chest up as high as I can, because from here, I'm going to kip again. I'm going to kick my legs forward, kick them down and back to generate that momentum and then right as they're swinging to the peak on the backswing I'm going to kick them forward again at the same time I pull with my arms to get my chest over the branch and catch myself on my forearms or my hands wherever you feel comfortable once your chest is over you've done it you've made it on top of the branch you can switch both arms and from there hook one arm and then that'll make it easier to then hook the other arm to get both arms hanging and then once you're hanging by your arms you can then once again do the kipping method to get your chest all the way onto the branch the tree transfer method so this method is where you use one tree to get into another tree sometimes it's a smaller tree you're using to get into the bigger tree so that you can reach up the higher branches or sometimes it's just transferring between different trees for fun the tree transfer method pretty much uses every other method but where you have to use one tree to get to another tree. My first example are going to be these pine trees. So as you can see, the branches are pretty high up and hard to reach. But right here, I can climb this smaller tree, wedging my feet against this bigger tree to get up high enough to grab some branches and then make my way over to this tree over here where there's a lot more branches going up. For this next tree transfer example, I'm going to use this smaller tree to bend it over to reach this large branch up here. When doing tree transfers, the main thing is you wanna make sure you have a secure hold as you're reaching for the next tree. So that if you don't grab it correctly or the branch is weaker than you thought, since you can't really test it before you reach for it, that you still have a secure hold from where you started. And then once you have a secure hold on the tree you're transferring to, then you shift your weight once you feel that balance and your positioning you can move across and make the transfer. When using this method the main thing is that you test the tree you're going to be bending so you can get a feel for how strong it is how much flex it has because you don't want to damage and break a tree unnecessarily but trees often are stronger than we realize as long as they're healthy. So the last tree climbing method I'm going to show you today is the hanging branch climb. So this is when the branches hang low enough that you can reach the ends of them and the branches are strong enough that from the ends of them you can actually climb all the way up them to the main trunk of the tree. Now in doing this style of climb, this one you have the highest risk of breaking the branch. So it's important that you really test the branch carefully because it's better to not damage the tree. And so what I like to do is start at the very end and just start pulling the branch down to just listen and feel for any cracking or breaking and just kind of get a feel for how strong that branch is. As I pull it down further and further, I'll begin to start putting my weight on it. And if it still feels strong, I'll start jumping into it. If I hear any crackling, then I'm not gonna do it. It's not a branch worth climbing on. But if up to that point, it seemed strong and can hold my weight, then you know it should be able to hold your weight going all the way up because that's where it's its weakest is at the very end. So once you start moving up, it's just going to get stronger and stronger. That's why I really like to make sure it can hold my weight jumping at the very end that I know for sure it's gonna hold my weight as I climb up to the stronger part of the branch. Once you're on the branch, you can either hook your feet to help conserve energy, which is what I like to do because I like being able to climb as long as possible. And that comes down to moving 
relaxed and conserving energy as much as possible. So using my feet helps save my arm strength. One thing to pay attention to with the branch as you're putting your weight onto it is the amount it bends or the angle of the bend. If it's a strong sturdy branch it should bow kind of like a fishing pole. The, you can tell the weight is being distributed among the whole branch. If the branch just kind of rocks to a sharp angle at one point then you know it's more likely to break at that point because you're putting a more severe stress on that point where it's bending. So there you go there's 10 ways to climb a tree without any equipment. Now be sure once again to check out my how to climb trees safely video before you start going out there and climbing trees just so you know how to be as safe as possible and also I'm sure there's plenty of other methods for climbing trees with no equipment as well so if you can think of them or know of any, be sure to let me know in the comments. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.